If you are thinking of selling your home, you may need to do a few things to make sure that you get the most money out of your home. Let's get straight to our friends at the Home Pro Show to find out what's worth putting some money into and what's worth skipping. Clint August is the host of the show. Hi, Clint. Heather, how are you? Doing great. How are you? Doing very well, you know, on a Monday morning. Uh, question for you. Have you ever tried to sell a home and used a realtor that you just thought, oh my God, I made a huge mistake? Well, I have to say, I have a husband who is a realtor, so oh. I'm lucky in that sense, but a lot of people are out there not knowing what to do or who to turn to. Yes, that's right. And, and, and we don't all have that luxury, do we? But uh, congratulations on that. Now, we do have Brian Garrity from the Garrity Group this morning. How are you this morning? Good morning, Greg. And Greg Cantor from Murray Lampert Design Build Remodel. You know, Greg, I actually went through that uh, when I tried to sell a home about 10 years ago. And I'm going to say I probably lost about $60,000 making a huge mistake in that area. Well, my wife and I made a mistake as well, and it ended up we hired someone that was more like a used car salesman than a realtor. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, Brian, tell us about what sellers should, you know, or buyers should look for in a realtor and what you have to offer. Okay, well, Wall Street Journal did a study recently that showed that real estate agents that have 10 years or more experience are going to get you at least $25,000 more. Now, how true that is, it would depend on the deal, but I thought that was an interesting study to and be in the Wall Street Journal. And how many years of experience do you have? I love it. So I didn't <laughs> I just I made didn't it. it. I, just, I just made it the game. But I got, um, the, people need to look, like it's very easy, like my friend does real estate, my aunt does real estate, anybody who does real estate on a part-time basis, no offense, but you need somebody who's digging in there every day, working it full-time, in the trenches, has experience, how and many deals have you closed, how many deals have you listed. Um, you gotta get in there and find out, because if you don't know and you get the wrong person, as Clint said, and I've had personal experience before I was in real estate with that same kind of horror story. It's tough. So it's, it's a really dramatic loss when you have somebody who's not good. And you have a law degree, so I you do. know how to handle the contracts and do a transaction the proper way. Correct. So you've got, you, but you gotta make sure that the person can dig in and you wanna make sure that when you're selling your house, they're giving you data as terms of what your house should sell for. A lot of agents go out and try to buy the listing, try to tell you they're gonna get you whatever you think your house is worth. Maybe sometimes that's right, but a lot of times it's wrong. Sellers have a more grandiose idea, unfortunately, of what they're gonna get. So you always wanna arm them with data. And then you wanna make sure that what is that agent gonna do for you outside of just listing your house? Sure, they're gonna put it on the MLS. Sure, they're gonna get it out to marketing websites. The MLS does that automatically. What are they gonna do outside of that? You so get the house prepared so it shows well, it's right? It's key. You gotta make sure that if you want top dollar that the seller or the buyers that come in are gonna be able to look at it and envision themselves in it. We talk about this a lot when I'm on here doing segments, but you got to be able to depersonalize your house. And for a lot of people, that's hard to do. They wanna leave the, you know, the bear skin rug and the horse <laughs> over the fireplace. For a lot of people that doesn't bode well, or the photos of all the family. We love them, we get it, but you've got to take that stuff down. Let's drill down a little further about buying a listing. I mean, yeah, you tell a, a seller what's realistic, right? Is, is that what it's all about? Yeah, it's all about going, and the data will show it. I mean, you can go out and show what's happening. You really want to see what's happened in the last 90 days for most areas. If it's a slower moving area, maybe the last six months. Anything outside of that window, yeah, no. You, it's, you're starting to get out of current activity. So it's very important to look at data. And you really do have to depersonalize it, you know, like, kind of like you're saying, it's you just what's, what you may love, perhaps somebody else doesn't love. And it's a hard thing to tell people, but have you, you ever, gotta do it. Have you ever walked away from a listing? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes, absolutely. All right, we have a Twitter question for you, Brian. Sure. Our last child is going off to college. We have a big home and don't feel we need all this space, but we think the house needs some remodeling to get max dollars. Should we invest in that or sell as is? Perfect question for what we're talking about, yeah. why you need an experienced realtor. Um, there's a lot of things popping up with these renovation companies that are associating themselves with realtors and saying, oh, we'll fix up your house, we'll do everything we can, and you'll just pay us when it closes escrow. And what happens in those kinds of cases where the renovation person and the realtor are working together, usually the consumer is getting the short end of that stick. You want to be able to go out and get your own estimates, work with somebody like Murray Lampert that's reputable, that's been in town forever, that you know is going to treat you right. Um, but it's really going to depend. If you're going to be wiped out by making your house updated and renovated, et cetera, you got to stand back and prioritize the list. But 
I would do it for certain things, but there's that like paint, freshen it up, maybe the flooring, carpet. But if you're gonna do a full on kitchen remodel, full on bathroom remodel, you're probably, you may not get dollar for dollar return back. Return on investment, yeah, right? Yeah, you gotta look at what the return's gonna be. Sometimes it's easier just to clean it up, freshen up the space and not hit a full remodel because you're not always gonna get a dollar for dollar return. All right, Brian, All Garrity right, of the friend. Garrity Group, thank, thank you so you. much, Thank Greg. you very much. Thanks, Greg. Uh, Heather, you know, approvedhomepros.com. If you wanna get a hold of Brian Garrity of the Garrity Group or our other pros, again, approvedhomepros.com, that's where you wanna go. We don't all have the luxury of having a, a stud husband that does real estate himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just closed a deal with him. <laughs> that's, <laughs> you know? true. that's true. Brian and my husband just work together. Awesome. In a small world, be nice to everyone you meet. You never know when you're gonna come across them again, right? That's right. All right, all right. thanks guys, approvedhomepros.com. Again, is the name of that website. Thanks, guys. I do appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Still to come here on San Diego Living. Uh, let's get over to how about this story? Maybe you are not in the market for a new home, but the home you're in 